Hi, in this video I want to go over how you can make these gears and treads rotate in Blender if you want to render it out in Cycles or Eevee rather than in Unity. We're going to automate this a little bit in that I want it to animate based on wherever the tank body is. So I have everything parented to just the main tank body and as I move it along the Y axis I want everything to automatically rotate for me so that I don't have to hand animate all of it. And the way that you use one value to influence another value is called drivers. And so we can add drivers pretty easily in 2.8. There's still a few quirks that they're working out, but all of the math and the basics will remain the same uh, no matter what version you're using. Now, you may have noticed that there's a few updates to Blender since the last video in this course. And I'm using the latest version just because drivers work a bit better than the version I had been using before. But really, the largest change uh, are just stability improvements and uh, some new icons. Going over drivers, first I'm going to add the drivers to these gears here. And the way that you add drivers in 2.8 is super simple. All you need to do is make sure you know which property you want to change. In this case, at first it might look like I want to change the X rotation. But actually, we need to make sure that we're looking at our local transformations instead. And so this looks like we need to rotate it along our Z. And we can test this by hitting R and then Z and then hitting Z one more time to go to local and rotating. So that works. But actually, I want to apply these transformations so that I'm rotating it along the local X as well, just so that it doesn't get too messy. So I'm going to hit Control A and apply rotation. And I'll do that for all of these as well. Just Control A, apply rotation. And that way, we don't need to think about it. Now, remember that some of these are also offset, and that works fine because we're going to be using the same driver for all of these different objects here. So even if they're slightly off-rotated, that's, that's totally fine. So just apply whatever you want the initial starting value to be. So with that, let's select this object here. And so we want it to rotate along the local X value here. So let's right-click and just add driver. And that's going to give us a little pop-up window that we can use to edit our driver. So we don't need to actually go to the driver editor or anything like that. We can just do it all here. Under the driver settings, the type is scripted expression. That's totally fine. The only thing that that means is that we can type in whatever number we want here. So if we put in a 3 and click Enter, then we're going to get 3. Or in this case, it's converting that to degrees and, and all that stuff. Uh, to go back to the pop-up, just right-click and hit Edit Driver. The initial value that was in here was var plus zero, var being short for variable, and that's what the default variable is down here. So that's going to be whatever the value of this is. So we need to choose an object first before this makes any sense. So let's choose our tank body by typing in body, selecting that, and we're going to be using the y location because it's going to be moving in the y direction. And you'll notice that the value here doesn't update, and that's just Again, a quirk of this particular version of Blender, because it's an alpha stage, uh, in the future, you should see this update with the exact number. Uh, and you can see the number here, which is 76.4. Um, but now we have the driver set up, and it's attached to the tank body. So as we move this back and forth, the wheel is going to rotate. However, it's moving in the wrong direction, which is fairly simple to fix. We just need to invert it. So right click, edit driver and put a negative in front of the variable. Click Enter, we can try this again, and now it's going in the right direction. The thing that you'll notice though, is that it's going a little bit slow. It doesn't look like it's sticking to the ground, it's kind of sliding everywhere. So let's edit this again, edit driver, and I'm going to multiply it by number by using the star symbol, and I'm going to multiply it by three. Now you could try 1.5, 2, 3.5 and just kind of narrow it down from there. Usually I start with extreme numbers and then go uh, finer and finer until I find something that works. But I've tested this before and I know that multiplying it by 3 gives a good result. So as we roll this along, you can see that it appears to be sticking to the ground and, and rotating it as it should. So you could probably go 3.00 something, really finely tune it in. Uh, but for these purposes, I think 3 will be just fine. So now that we have this, I can easily copy this to the other objects by right-clicking, copy driver, and then selecting the other objects, and just pasting the driver 
right into the rotation x. So I'll do that for these two as well. Right click and paste driver. And now it's all done. So that was really easy. And the next thing that I want to do is add it to the treads. So this is a little bit weirder because you can't really animate UVs very well. But one thing that you can do is you can add drivers to node properties. So what we can do over here is manipulate this mapping node. And you'll notice that as soon as I start changing the location, specifically the Y location, because that's up and down in the node editor, then it's going to change exactly where those treads are along the mesh. So I'm going to add a driver to the Y location here. Now, one thing to note is, again, I think this is just an alpha thing, but it's not going to update as I move this along in Eevee. So I will add driver just first off. And let's change the variable to tank body. Oh, not the variable name. That should still be the same. Uh, let's go body for the object that we're referencing. Change this to Y location. So we're grabbing the Y location of the tank body, sticking it into the variable, and adding absolutely nothing to it. And there we go. So you can see that we're at negative 1.64. Uh, but as we move this along, it's not going to update in EV, or it's not going to update in the, the textured version either. So first of all, let me just save this just in case. OK, so what we can do is switch over to cycles, because that will update all of the drivers as we go along. And it's going to be pretty slow and, and hard to see here. So what I'm going to do, just to kind of cheat the system a bit, is go to the performance tab of the render settings, and then under viewport, I'm going to choose the start pixels and change that to 1024. So that means it's going to take longer to load, but it's also going to mean that I have a higher resolution to start out with. So it's going to take a second update. Uh, however, it's going to actually update in a way that I can see it more clearly. OK, so now we have this driver here. And we need to make sure that it's going in the right direction and that it's moving at the right speed. Let's place the 3D cursor there. 3D cursor right on that little guy. And you can pick any one of these, just one that's sticking along the ground. And then as we move our tank body, that little piece should stay right at the 3D cursor. So let's move this forward just a touch. And we can see that that is moving away from the 3D cursor. So let's edit this driver here. And give this a negative value to flip the direction that it's going in. Let's place the 3D cursor on one of those bumps. And make sure that we're moving the tank body. And now you can see that when we move the tank body, it's actually sticking right there, which is what would happen if it was rolling along the ground. And somehow it magically worked out. That negative, the exact value of the tank's location, actually works for tank treads. And so that's extremely convenient. You can see that if we move it uh, really far, then it's slightly off. So you could go into the 0, 0.00 whatever if you'd like to finely tune it. However, for our purposes here, that's going to work just fine. So that is how you add drivers in Blender 2.8. It's really convenient that we can do it right here in the interface without having to open any other editors. Though, along that note, if you do have a driver and we right click, you can also just open Drivers Editor and that'll open it in a new window here. And you can edit the variables and all that stuff uh, right down here. I hope you found that helpful. I wanted to put this PBR version of the tank in our resources section as well as on the Blender market. And drivers really came in handy in making sure that it rendered well in Blender and animated very easily, uh, not just in Unity. So thanks for watching this little addendum, and I'll see you in the next course.